uh, Ms. Erika Hansen uh, for joining the meeting. Uh, I think you have taken time off and from your busy schedule and uh, you are joining us to give some remarks on this uh, Google Developer Students Club. Uh, welcome you for this uh, meeting. Uh, I think we have a very long relationship with uh, Google for more than uh, 10 years. Uh, we, have, uh, we are a 26 year old uh, institution uh, and uh, 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 we have very long relation. Uh, we have implemented Google Apps for Education and uh, we are successfully running it for more than 10 years. So we have close to 15,000 uh, student accounts, including our alumni, faculty members and uh, students. And uh, we, in, uh, we have also incorporated uh, several Google products uh, into our existing ERP that we are developing in-house. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we, have, we have been uh, successfully uh, implementing the Google Drive into our ERP. And uh, we have uh, several participants uh, who are using this effectively, like uh, more than 15,000 students and uh, more than 1,000 faculty members are effectively using the Google Drive uh, to upload our documents and uh, maintain it online. And uh, we have done several integrations uh, with Google products. And uh, as a part of this Google initiative, uh, appreciating this, uh, some three years before, uh, we got uh, uh, good funding uh, for about 45 lakhs of funding from Google, uh, offered by one of the uh, ASA Pacific manager, Ms. Mr. Uh, Gagandeep Nagra, by at that time uh, when he was getting that ASA Pacific Academic uh, Alliance program. So uh, I think we have a good, a good number of uh, you know, relationships with Google. Uh, I think one, one Mr. Ashwin, our current uh, student, uh, came up with this idea of uh, starting a developer uh, student club or institute, and uh, we are very happy to host that club in our campus. Uh, and uh, we are also thankful to our uh, professor, uh, Dr. Sundaramurthy, for helping him out uh, in creating this great initiative. And also, I welcome all these students. Uh, I think now we could see more than uh, 170 students joining this initiative. I hope it will be a long relationship with Google. And uh, once again, thank uh, Ms. Eric, Erika Hansen uh, for joining this meeting. And uh, I hope for this will go a long way. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, I'm also very keen to listen uh, from Ms. Erika Hansen. I thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Erika. And uh, thank you, Ms. Sundramati and Ashwin for making this happen today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to in, uh, invite Mr. Ashwin Kumar, DSC lead of our uh, Banaria Minister of Technology to introduce our chief guest. Good evening, one and all present here. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. Myself, Ashwin, the DSC lead, for this academic year, take this opportunity to introduce Erika Hansen. Erika completed her bachelor's degree in psychology and communication from Stanford University in the year 2002 to 2006. Later, she joined Google as an agency account executive. And she was the program manager for the emerging market outreach way back in 2013. Followed by, she held the project management position for sales strategy and operation in North America. She is currently a part of the engineering organization of the developer relation team and work with developer work now leading program developer student club DSD, which are university based community programs groups for students interested in Google developer technology. She is passionate about the communities and co founded the Girl Meetup in Singapore, which is a community in tech. Ashwin, I think she you have to adjust been... your mic. Ashwin, can you please adjust your mic? I think your voice is a little breaking. Now, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, please. Go ahead. Fine. Yeah. And she is passionate about communities and co founded Key Girl Meetup Singapore, which is a community for women in tech. She has been at Google for 14 plus years and worked across different areas of the business and different areas such as Mountain View, San Francisco, London, Singapore, and currently at New York. Right. So, without wasting much of your time, I would like to welcome Erica Hansen for the presentation. Thanks for the opportunity. We welcome you, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here with all of you. And, and thank you so much uh, for the warm welcome and, and the kind words. Um, I'm so happy to, to be here and, and to be um, connected to your, um, your great university. So thanks so much for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, and so my name is Erica Hansen. I lead the Developer Student Clubs program globally. I'm based in New York. 
And I also, I have a, a teammate here who's also on the global team with me, Dhruv. Um, so I, I did, before I get started, I, I wanted to give a moment to Dhruv to also introduce himself. Dhruv, do you want to say hi? Sure. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Dhruv. Um, I joined the Developer Student Clubs team about five or six months ago in April 2020. Um, so I work as a global project manager, and I'm also based out of the New York City office with Erica. Um, as of right now, everything's virtual, but eventually we'll be, we'll be sitting together in the office. Great. Thanks so much, Shruv. I'm happy that you're here with us. Um, so I'm going to uh, share some slides with all of you, and um, I'm so happy that you're joining this Developer Student Club event, and, and this is the first time that the community is, is on your campus, so really excited about this. So I'll, I'll share my slides right now. I'm going to use my slides in just a moment. Great, so I'm going to share my screen. And the noise that you hear, we're just uh, admitting some people into the meeting as well. So that's what you're going to be hearing uh, just for a little bit longer. Um, and so I'm just presenting my slides right now. I think you can all see it. Great. So let's get started. So I, I wanted to give you a, an overview of the Developer Student Clubs program. I want to share some stories from uh, members of developer student clubs around the world and, and share a little bit about projects that have been built by students that are part of these communities. And, and then I do want to talk a bit about uh, career advice as well and, and a couple um, tips for applying to roles. So I'll share that near the end. Um, and then there will be some time for, for questions as well. So let's get started. Um, I, I'll share, I know you heard um, my introduction earlier, but I'll, I'll share a little bit uh, more information. Um, so I'm originally from California. I, I went to Stanford University where I studied um, communications and psychology. I did take one computer science class where I learned how to build my first simple website and, and did enjoy that. It got me interested in technology and so I joined Google um, right after that and that was actually this is 13 years, but as of a couple days ago, it's now been uh, 14 years at Google. Um, so I started Google, yeah, 14 years ago. My first role was actually working with small to medium-sized businesses on their marketing campaigns, and I was answering the phones, so that's the phone there. I then moved to London, uh, where I worked for three years and worked with, uh, did sales operations or project management work, and I managed a mentoring program for startups there, right? We connected uh, Google mentors with uh, local startups. Then I moved to in, uh, Singapore, where I was for, uh, I was based there for um, four years, where I was on the developer relations team, and that's the team that I'm on now. And we, our, our main focus is really on helping developers be successful. And so we run a number of training programs on different technology, like Android, Google Cloud, but we also uh, are very much focused on communities. Um, and so that's where I went to my first community event. Uh, that's the picture here. Um, and, and what I love about communities, uh, tech communities especially, whether they are online or in person, is that it's a place where you can go to um, get support from other people. You can learn about different technology. You can maybe build a project with other people. You can maybe start a start something together actually at a it really inspired me so I ended up co-founding Geek Girl Meetup Singapore which was a community for women focused on supporting them in building their first startups and so um, I learned a lot from going to a number of different uh, community events and so it's great that you're all part of this community now and this is a place where you can come and, and learn from each other share ideas and maybe build projects together then I moved to uh, New York and that's now where I live. I lead the uh, Developer Student Clubs program uh, globally from New York. And uh, I've been here for about two years now. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, what is uh, Developer Student Clubs and also share more, um, share stories from uh, DSC members around the world. Um, here we go. And I'm also going to share a few career tips. These are my own uh, personal thoughts. 
and, and so we'll go through those as well. So first, what is Developer Student Clubs? These are university-based community groups for students that are interested in Google Developer Technologies. And students grow their knowledge in a peer-to-peer -peer learning environment. So they're learning from other peers by going through um, workshops and different events, and also building solutions that solve local problems. Uh, and so the learning is really through workshops, whether it's online or in person, and it's also about uh, projects. So the reason why we really emphasize project building is because that is a way to really solidify your knowledge. What you learn in the workshops, you can really put that into practice and build a project and think, you know, is there something I can solve for? Can I make someone's life easier? Can I improve a process? Can I build something? that'll help others. Uh, and that's really what the, the project building piece is all about. And so that's what, what DSC does. With the community, it's really focused on bridging the gap between theory. It's important to learn theory, um, but also uh, putting it into practice for student developers and ideally helping you in becoming more industry ready. Uh, the program did start in India in 2017. And we really aim to provide students the resources and experiences to become more industry ready. And, and then it moved to um, expanded into Indonesia, which is where I was focused on Indonesia at the time, and then Sub-Saharan Africa, and now it's global. So you are part of a global community. There are over uh, 1,200 uh, developer student club communities all around the world. And just like at uh, your university, there's over 1,200 of those um, all over. So you are part of a global community. And so our, our goal with this program is really all about impact. And we want to impact students and empower them to impact their communities through technology. Um, and I think that uh, people can have a great impact by thinking of, you know, are there local problems we can solve for? Is there something we can make better? And how do we use technology to do that? Um, and so that was uh, an, a brief overview of what is Developer Student Clubs. And now I want to share some stories from Developer Student Club members around the world. Um, and so one, uh, one thing I wanted to share was how some DSC members have built their first apps through the community and also how they supported each other as a community. Um, so I'm going to share one example from Indonesia. Um, I wanted to share a couple of from people that I know personally. And, and so this is Hastu. She was a member of a developer student club in, um, in Indonesia. Um, she decided to join a developer student club to learn more about Android. And she attended a workshop, which was led by um, Tessia. She's a DSC lead on the left. Um, so she went to an Android workshop, wanted to learn more about Android. Uh, Tessia mentored um, Hastu through her Android journey, and um, Hastu eventually joined a project team, which is a, a key part of the program, getting into projects teams, building projects together. And, and so Hastu built her first app, um, and it was to help blind students. So she connected blind students with site volunteers uh, through this app. And so we heard more about her story uh, we were really inspired um, because um, Hastu had shared with Tessia that she didn't think she could become a developer because she is deaf. Um, and she thought because she's not able to hear, maybe it would be difficult. But Tessia, you know, was there to support her and help her in learning Android and building her first app. And we were really inspired by her journey. And so she went to Google I.O., which is our big uh, tech conference every year. And, and she shared her developer journey with other developers and also with Sundar, the CEO of Google. She also joined me on, with me on stage and, and shared her journey um, and using sign language with the audience, um, uh, with uh, some community leaders around the world. And so this is one story of a member. Um, I, I find her journey very inspiring. Uh, but a, a key part of this whole story is that um, this, the, the community and Tessia, the DSE lead, gave her has to that space to grow as a developer. She really cared, um, but also the community cared. The community was there to support each other through any potential challenges, um, to really help each other in building their first projects and learning something new. And that's why that peer-to-peer -peer learning piece 
is really helpful that people feel comfortable asking each other questions. And so um, that's really what being part of a community is all about. And so that's what, that was one story of uh, a member of a developer student club and all of you are members and, and attendees at, at this event. Um, and so this can really be a way that you um, kick off your, your journey and learning something new, but also making sure that you're there to mentor and support each other. Um, I wanted to share another story. So just examples of how DSE members um, have become active participants in their DSE communities. And so I encourage you all to be active participants in this community here. Um, so this is an example in, in Ghana where a, they were hosting a Firebase workshop. Students were learning a bit more about Firebase and uh, it was a freshman that guided students through the basics. And so it's, it was the student's first year and he learned more about Firebase and then you know, taught that to other students as well. So it's really about um, you know, if you wanna be a speaker or a volunteer and support running events like this, um, then that's definitely a great way to participate and be an active member in your community. Um, also, I really like to see people's journeys. Um, and so this is one example of a, 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 a student who was a member of a, a, of a community like this one. Eventually, she, she went from a member to being part of the core team and helping kind of volunteer and organize events. And then she became a leader later. Um, and also, she shared that she was an attendee at this tech event called the DevFest. And the next year, she became a speaker. Um, and so it's really cool that, you know, there's different steps of your own journeys. If you wanna, you can be a member and join events and learn more about technology, but also you can be an active participant. You can um, join in and building projects. You can join in and volunteer in an in, in event like this, uh, or you could also um, speak potentially at an event if you have a certain level of expertise in one technology. And so all of this to show that you can be active participants in your own communities and, and including this community, and I definitely encourage you to do so. Another um, story I wanted to share is just about how DSC members have built projects together, and that is a key part of the Developer Student Clubs program is building projects and thinking, is there something we can solve for? And so I wanna play a video right now um, of some students in Ghana building a project together. And later I have a, a video I wanna share of students in India doing the same. But let's watch this video together. It's about two minutes. And let me know if you can't hear this, but I think you should be able to. When I came to first year, I found it difficult navigating a lot of facilities on campus. Most first year students, they found it a major challenge. So I said, okay, this is something that we really need to solve. Then this is a community where students who are like-minded come together to learn technologies in cloud, Android development, and web development. So after a few workshops, I figured that we could solve accessibility for first-year students. We decided to use the mall as a use case to build a navigation system using AR technology. At first, people were like, this is really a complex problem to solve. But then after we broke the problem down, we realized that all the technologies we had to use, we had already learned them in our GSC workshops. When I heard about it, I was like, David, I need to join this project because I was lost basically the entire first academic year. That's what DSC does. It gives you your projects and it makes sure that you are well equipped to work on the project. So we had a lot of volunteers and we broke them into teams. First, we had a Blender team to build a 3D model of the building. Then we had a Unity and Scripted team who got the models and made it interactive and available to the Android team, who built the screens and the app and use Firebase, which stores user data and for business analytics. And we had a UI team who created a design asset and all the dynamic interfaces we see. Last, we had a documentation team who put everything into one file to make it available to the open source community. I learned this for I study chemistry. I got inspired by attending one of the DSC seminars. I'm actually very impressed about my brother's journey here because I have a computer science today. I just have to focus on the PC part, computer building apps, but he has something else to do. But he's still taking some time off to help us and he's really doing a good job. Now I can do Android apps. That means I can use that as a part time job and maybe chemistry as my full time job or maybe the vice versa. 
There were times that we had to meet in the evenings. There were times we had to meet early in the morning just to get the project working. It was hard, but then we looked at the bigger picture and we realized, okay, we can do this. So, yeah, DSC is a family and it's about the learning of teamwork and leadership. What we build is not a perfect app, but we've come a long way by being able to use the knowledge that we gain from our DSC workshops. My God, this is cool. Who really love this? So thanks for watching that video with me. This, the reason I share this is um, basically as an example of how a developer student club, like your developer student club on your campus, they came together to think, hey, is there something that we can do to make something easier for students around us? And they noticed that students were getting lost on the campus. So they said, hey, let's build an AR navigation app. And first, we'll use the local mall as a use case. And, and so they worked on the project together. And another point of that, what I liked is that they said, through this, they learned teamwork and leadership. And that is a key part of project building, is that you really are able to improve your skills uh, working in a team and also improve your leadership skills when you have to come together and, and build a project. There's um, definitely a lot of leadership skills that you can gain from that process. And actually at Google, we everything I do is in project teams. Um, I only did one project in a team in, uh, at my university. And so I think the more that you can work on projects with teams, and uh, that's definitely something that'll help with career later, because everything I do is, is in a team, basically. And so um, that, that's definitely very helpful. Um, and so one thing that you can work towards is the solution challenge. So this is something that we do every year, and we're going to announce it in probably January next year. It's basically an annual contest or competition where um, you all can submit a project that you've worked on that solves a local community problem and uses at least one Google technology, whether it's Android or TensorFlow machine learning. Um, and so that's something you can start working on even now, anytime before that date. And, and I definitely encourage you to think of, of what what can you solve for and, and start working on your projects even, uh, even now if you want to. Um, so we just had a solution challenge uh, recently and we had 10 winning teams from that um, for 2020. I'll share two examples of projects. Um, so this was, it was called Free Speak in Germany and they basically use machine learning or TensorFlow specifically uh, to analyze people's presentations and give them individual feedback. So that's uh, like more body language. So it's kind of like a virtual coach. Um, so it would have been helpful for me today and I could see, you know, what my hand, hand gestures, does that show that I'm happy or not? Um, and so they built this project and submitted it for the solution challenge. I'll share one more example. Um, this was a worthy walk and they basically built an, an app uh, Android app that uh, it basically helps people achieve their their health goals. It it tracks you know their exercise and gives them incentives to keep exercising by giving them discounts um, to local businesses. And so uh, that's they actually did end up launching this. Um, it's available on the the Google Play Store. Um, so that's another example of a project. Um, and here is uh, one student just sharing um, that it was a, the solution challenge itself is a, a, a great practical learning experience while contributing to social good. And that's really what it's about. It's about practical learning, you know, building these projects, but also contributing to social good. Is there someone we can help through this technology? Also, if you want to watch, uh, we, we did a demo day event. It was a live virtual event where we had the 10 winning teams demo their projects and answer questions uh, from Google experts. Uh, one of the projects was from India. It was called MeCamp, and it's uh, related to universities, kind of like a one-stop shop uh, for your university to get everything you need. Um, and so you can actually still watch these videos. <clears throat> we have them available um, at this link, and I can share the link in the chat as well, um, where you can watch the demos, and we have a, a keynote speech from Vince Cerf, who's what, known as one of the fathers of the internet. Um, and so you can watch the replay if you're interested in seeing what projects students built from around the world. 
And lastly, I want to share a, a story from a student leader in, in India. So he's going to share a little bit more about what his community on his campus, uh, what they built and what kind of problems they were looking to solve for. So I'll, I'll, I'll share. Um, I'm going to start it a little bit later. So it's about a minute. We get a lot of exposure. The, we get a lot. What we do at DSC is students get a lot of exposure. They're going to their local businesses, solving very simple problems. My DSC has a combination of people from multiple domains: developers, we have web designers, UI designers. The apps that we generally build are to help local businesses. We have worked with the local cafeteria. We work with local key vendors. So we go to them, find out what their problems are, and uh, we try to develop an app for them. I got to showcase my DSCS app in just two minutes, which was really stressful. But the exposure I got from the Udacity mentors, from the Googlers, and from the scholars it was pretty amazing. So for example, to integrate payment API to our uh, application, the next night I spoke to my uh, team, you know, on a hangout, and they were really impressed. I think these are pretty amazing feedback, and uh, we would love to do it, and we will do it. The one problem that India has is we have millions of users, very small amount of developers. And India is an amazing emerging mobile market, and we do need to have mobile developers to uh, take the full potential of the massive population in our country. A lot of villages uh, face the problem of water, farming, floods. Maybe we can develop applications to uh, solve this problem. Might be very ambitious for us as students to say that, but nothing is impossible. We can do it. Um, so that's uh, Christy sharing more about um, how different types of projects that they worked on. And I actually went there and met and met um, met some of the people in person who he built projects for. One was um, Juiceberg. It was like the local juice shop. So they built a project um, in collaboration collaboration with them. Um, and they, they would build one for the local canteen. So they were just thinking, hey, are there projects we can work on to support uh, other, you know, local businesses around our, our university campus? Um, so I wanted to share some of those projects. And so that is a key part of the program. It's not only learning different technology, but it's also uh, working on projects together. And lastly, I just want to share uh, just how people have shared their stories, whether it's members and, and the DSC leads have shared their own journeys. Um, here's a couple examples of the DSC leads sharing their, their own journeys of being a DSC lead, but we also hear stories of, uh, of people sharing, um, you know, a cool project that they worked on and how that helped, uh, helped people in their community. So those are also stories we love to hear. And if you have any stories along the year, maybe you know through the Developer Student Club, you, you learned something new, you built a new project, you uh, mentored people, we'd love to hear stories. This is a, a public forum if you wanna share. And we do review these stories regularly and see if there's any that we can share on our Google developers social channels and also on uh, our blogs as well. Um, so this is a, a form that you could fill out if you have any stories to share. Um, and I really love this quote from Tony Robbins. He's kind of like a, a guru, a, a, a career and life coach. Um, so the only limit to your impact is your imagination and commitment. And that's so true. All of you can have an impact through um, in any way, whether it's building a project to support others, whether it's mentoring each other, whether it's sharing your knowledge with other people. Um, and so the only limit to that is really your own imagination and, and your commitment to, to that process. And so I hope you all remember that. And so that's, um, so I have now shared about developer student clubs. I've shared some stories from members um, like all of you around the world and, and what people have, have done together. Uh, lastly, I want to end with some career tips and my, my own personal thoughts on this. Um, and so let me get into some of these um, tips. I just have a couple slides on this and I'll, I'll speak to it. Um, and so, with your, your first you know, jobs right out of college or, or anything that you're applying to, um, these are just some things that I would recommend uh, thinking about and, and working towards. And, and so a few things I've seen from uh, teammates who have joined uh, the company, for example, and, and some things that I, I've seen across the board is just that you know, showing leadership 
it is really helpful and showing that you are a leader uh, within, you know, on your university campus um, and that, or whether it's showing that you're a leader in, you know, leading a project team, for example, a leader in being a uh, part of a core team of a community. Um, leadership can also be uh, outside of your university as well, showing that you're leading a uh, project community, um, or you're just basically taking that initiative and leading something. Um, so I have seen a lot of uh, people exhibiting strong, you know, leadership skills. Also having great problem solving skills and critical thinking are very important. And um, I've seen everything we do is like about problem solving and it's being able to, um, you know, you get a challenge and break it up into, you know, how do we solve this and how can we um, work through this uh, specific problem and, and really being good, not being able to navigate ambiguity. You know, it's like maybe you're handling something that's kind of complex, but just taking a step back and thinking, you know, how can we solve this? What makes the most sense and getting information, um, potentially getting feedback from other people to understand what is the core of that issue or this problem that we're trying to solve? Are we even solving the right problem? Is there a different problem we should be solving? Um, and getting to the core of the issue. And so I think problem solving is, is very important and being able to handle ambiguity well. If, if, you, if you take on a challenge, not being like too stressed about it and just thinking, okay, let me take a step back. Let me start whiteboarding. So for me, what I do, um, and actually in my interview, uh, for one of my roles within the company was uh, I really focus on problem solving and I, I, I started to whiteboard and say like, okay, here's how I would break this up and I wrote pillars and, and kind of tried to really break up the problem and get to the core of what it was even the problem we were solving. And so that, I think that's very important. Um, one piece I'll also say as well is, is getting to the why. I really like that book about, um, I think it was from Simon Sinek. I, I can, uh, it's, it's getting to the why. I'll have to get the exact name of that book. Um, but really, you know, why? Why are we doing something? What is the purpose of this? Um, what is the core of why should we even be doing this, working on this project? Um, and, and really, you know, setting goals for any project that you're about to work on. Um, is this something that should be solved for? Why are we doing this? What is our vision for this? Uh, what are some of our goals uh, for building this project, for example? And so I think at the beginning, when you take on a new project or when you take on anything new uh, that you're working on is just really getting to the why first and setting up the vision and the goals. And so, and, and getting other people around that as well to make sure that all of you are on the same page and, and can really work towards that together. Um, the third thing is just, is technical expertise. I think that's important to continue to learn and, and it depends on, um, yes, Simon Sinek, thank you so much. That, that, that's, uh, it's a really good book. Uh, I recommend you reading that. Um, and technical expertise is important, and you don't have to know everything and be an, an expert in everything, but figure out what are you passionate about. Is there a specific programming language that gets you excited, or that is, um, you know, it seems like there's a lot of open roles for that specific, um, and, and, and knowing that specific language is gonna help. Um, and just figuring out different ways that you can learn that. Um, I can share one just with Android um, that, there's a lot of great uh, uh, Kotlin resources out there. That's um, Android is now um, Kotlin first. And so I can share the link in a moment. But there's basically some uh, different ways of learning Kotlin. You know, you can learn it through this Developer Student Club community. Um, there's also some online resources and, and free resources uh, where you can watch videos and do some collabs online. Um, so I encourage you to just see what's out there and, and, you know, learn as much as you can on your own. There's a lot of free resources out there. And also through this community, you can learn about new technology or really improve your skills and go from being, you know, more of a beginner in one area to being a bit more advanced. Um, are you more interested in 
uh, mobile or web, and you can really think about that. It's really about what are you passionate about, and then just see what's out there. Start learning on your own. Some developers I've met have just, you know, they just wanted to learn everything they could, and so they, they just put the time in and, and learned online, took courses, and then were dedicated to their university studies, which is, um, is, is critical as well, making sure that you're really engaged in your, your classes and um, are really, you know, asking good questions and, and thinking about um, just really critically thinking about what you're learning and continue to learn on that path. And so that technical expertise is, is really important as well. And a fourth area is uh, teamwork and collaboration. And so that is really essential is being able to be a team player um, for any job that you have in the future. Collaboration is so important. You want people to like working with you. You really want to make sure that you're a team player, that you're in it for the right reasons, that you really care about the team, that it's about the team and not just about you know, you or, or one specific person, it, it's really all about teamwork and collaboration. And the goal should really be success of all of you, the success of the project. And so that is becomes really critical in the workforce is that you are all working as a team and you remember that your shared vision and what are we trying to do here together? How can I support this other person? And, and, and really supporting each other through that journey. Um, every, as I mentioned, Everything I do is, is in project teams. Um, and so it's really important to support each other, check in on how people are doing. Um, you know, everybody goes through different challenges in their life and really make sure that you know each other and, and ask questions, make sure that everyone is feeling good about the process and how maybe a project is going. Um, and so I think teamwork and collaboration are really critical in the workforce. And, and that's something that you can work towards now within this community, within projects that you take on together. And then the last thing is about uh, networking. And so I think, you know, networking is really helpful now. And then also when you have, um, you know, your first job role out of university, it, it's, it's really great to get to know other people and share ideas, um, ask questions, uh, potentially, you know, collaborate uh, together on different things, but I've, I've met some really cool people through different communities, and, and I think that networking can really help because you can share ideas. Actually, at a networking event, that is how I ended up co-founding Geek Girl Meetup in Singapore because I met uh, one woman at one of these networking events, and we decided, hey, we, let's, let's work on this community together. And so through networking, you share ideas. You, you can maybe find other people to work on a project with you, um, you can ask each other about job opportunities and support each other. Um, and so I think networking is helpful before uh, now and also once you're in your first careers. So those are some of my own personal thoughts on things that you can work on now um, to, to get your first jobs. I do think that it, it takes, you know, personal commitment to just really work on learning new technology, um, working on your leadership skills, making sure that you're also supporting other people and mentoring others and having others men mentor you as well. Um, so I think working on, on these things is, is definitely helpful in that process. And, and separately, just wanted to mention that there are a number of resources. These are, this is specific to jobs at Google. Um, there's also resources for jobs at many other awesome tech companies out there. I encourage you to look into those as well. Um, and, and this is specific to Google. Um, I'll chat this link in, in here as well. Um, there's a lot of videos in here. Um, and these are, uh, and some interview tips as well. And here, I'm just going to send the link here. Um, so feel free to take a look at that. Uh, there's, there's some really great resources and videos. So I encourage you to, to read through all of that if you're interested in jobs at Google. But definitely look out for other jobs at other companies as well. Um, and, and there's some really great resources out there. And lastly, um, thank you so much for listening. It's been really great to, to be here with all of you. Thank you for Aswin to, um, you know, for inviting me and, um, and, and thank you for the warm introduction earlier. And these are a couple ways that you can stay connected with me. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I will add, uh, I'll add all of you back. 
And, and you can follow me on Twitter as well, where I share mostly uh, community related updates and, and different things about um, Google developers. Um, but thanks so much for listening and, and for being here with me. And I'm excited to see what else your community does throughout the year. And I'm so happy that you're part of this first uh, Developer Student Club's uh, info session. So thank you so much. Okay, great. So I'll stop presenting. Um, so thank you so much for listening. I'll, I'll pass it back to Aswin and um, also let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll, I'll share these links as well in the chat. Um, thank you so much. Here's, you can reach me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And uh, definitely check out the, a couple of those links I shared as well. Um, so thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions as well. You can put it in the chat window if you want. Or you can also reach out to me directly. I'm very happy to answer any questions. And I can share one more link. If you have a story to share, we do have this uh, link that you can fill out. Uh, I see a question. Thanks for uh, Flutter. Yes, we do have a, a number of resources on um, Flutter. Actually, let me share a couple links with you right now. Oh, I have an Android link handy. Um, I'm going to share this link. Here's some um, courses on, on Android basics that are um, available. There's also um, some really great Flutter resources. I know through the Solution Challenge, a number of students did uh, build using Flutter, and they found Flutter to be um, really a helpful way to, to build their projects because it allowed them to upload onto um, iOS and Android. So that's definitely, uh, Flutter is, is a great technology to learn. Um, and there are some great uh, Flutter resources out there as well. Um, and I can, I can share some of those as well right now. Yeah, that's a great question about connecting with the global communities and students around the world. Um, that's, that's a really great point. I, we need to think about a way that all of the developer student clubs can connect with each other, all the members can connect. Uh, that's definitely something that we could uh, look into, just how we might be able to connect everybody. Um, and right now, the developer student clubs are university-based, so you can definitely connect with each other. Um, but yeah, we'll have to think about ways that we can definitely connect all of the members globally as well. So that's something we need to look into. Um, yeah, so for um, any entrepreneurship groups, uh, yeah, so entrepreneurship, that's a great point about, um, you know, definitely when students are working on their projects, we, that's something you can think about is, do we want to make this project into a startup eventually? Um, one book I would recommend reading is uh, The Lean Startup. Um, that's a, a very helpful book. I'll just, uh, lean, I'll just type this as well. Um, that's a really great book, uh, basically, that goes through um, just the different stages. And it's really all about like testing first before you build this huge solution, first test it with users and make sure like, are they even going to use it? Are there things that we can do to improve this project first before we like do this massive build stage? So um, I definitely encourage you to read that book. I think that's helpful in terms of um, entrepreneurship communities. Um, there are, I know there's a, a, some Launchpad initiatives uh, with that Google also works on for later stage startups. Um, we don't have a specific uh, startup community, but that's definitely within this community, you can definitely connect with each other and start thinking about, uh, you know, if you want to learn more about different uh, steps of the startup journey, um, you can definitely start discussing that uh, with each other. But I do think that 
that book is really helpful. Um, and that's great that you are learning advanced JavaScript concepts. Uh, I think that's that's great. It's good to just think about you know what are you really um, really interested in, and and I I a lot of ways that I find out you know what are the different opportunities is I'm always like googling things and just seeing you know what are there um, you know jobs that uh, really require that or certain fields um, that could really uh, that are open, that really value uh, that specific type of technology or, or language. Um, so definitely, you can do some Googling for that. Um, that's great. I think, yeah, building your career in the field of robotics and AI, um, that, that's, that's really, um, that's great to start learning about that now. I'd say just learn as much as you can, and, and I'd say, like, one thing I do is I look on LinkedIn um, a while ago when I thought, okay, I might want to get into a different field or if I'm a project manager, where does this path go? Uh, I did some Googling and I thought, you know, is this more in the operation space or where is there a role that I want later on? Like, what does it mean to be a COO? And I did a lot of Googling around that. I also looked on LinkedIn at different kind of job opportunities. Um, I Googled and and looked up different articles about where can learning this technology, what are the different job opportunities later. So I definitely encourage you to just um, to Google that and click. There's so many articles out there as well. Um, also using LinkedIn as a way to search. I found, actually looked around and saw certain people in roles that I wanted someday. So I looked at like what was the background and I'm like, okay, that's that's interesting that that was their path. Everyone does have a unique path. Um, so for me specifically, I learned, um, uh, I basically learned, uh, uh, I, I, I started as a, a project manager. Um, but I actually, before that, my first role was in sales. And so I didn't even know I wanted to be a project manager. I didn't even know all the steps to get there. But actually, I figured it out as I went along. I realized that I didn't uh, love sales after four years. And then I thought, what's next? Okay, what do I like doing? What are my strengths? What am I good at? And so eventually I, I learned that I liked project management. I did 20% projects in project management to learn it on the job. And then once I was in those roles, I basically uh, learned you know, okay, I like this. And so I eventually was just very proactive and, and looked around to see, hey, are there teams that I like? Uh, and I met with people. I said, I, can I work on a project for you and support you and do this 20% time? Um, so I was very proactive. So that's my biggest bit, bit of feedback for you is, is just to be proactive. And and that's and under and take a step back at some point and figure out what are your strengths. Um, I took the Strengths Finder test, um, so that's one way to 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 realize like what you're good at. Um, strengths Finder, um, and so those are you know that's a way to better understand you know what you might be uh, good at. Um, but just really be proactive. Just do a lot of Google searches, ask around, but just do the work, put the time in to learn about it yourself because the resources and information is out there. I spend a lot of time just reading articles, doing searches on my own, so I definitely encourage you all to, to do that as well. Um, and that's great. Yeah, digital marketing, I think that's, that's really important. And um, I didn't study that before, and I kind of learned it on the job, and then I just uh, was able to really learn that, but I, I think there's a lot, a lot that you can learn from uh, digital marketing as well. Um, videos, websites, learning. Yeah, there's lots of information. So I encourage you to, to just look through. I sent one link over. Um, there's so many videos and resources out there. I see a question about Android. I'd say you can just look through all these, just click around, um, and there's a lot of different, like, code labs. Uh, the same with any, you know, there's a lot on, like, machine learning and TensorFlow, but here's specific to Android. I encourage you to just um, take a look around. Um, also, I, there's some really good resources on the Google Students page. 
Uh, let me share that again. I encourage you just to click around there, look at all the videos. There's a lot of um, relevant information. So I'd say just do some research, be proactive. And um, yeah, there's so much great information out there. And lastly, I, you know, I didn't know I wanted to be a program manager at university. I didn't know I wanted to be a program manager even after I was already at Google. You, I, you kind of figure things out as you go. So don't be too worried about, you know, knowing what you want to do and being ready to do that right away. I think I figured out that journey along the way and realized, you know, what do I like doing? What am I uh, pretty good at doing? Um, and then you can kind of figure it out from there. But it's definitely a learning journey. And there's not just one way of getting there. Other people at Google who are at, in my role as program managers, they had totally different paths. Some of them are software engineers before. Um, I was in sales before. So there, nobody had the same exact path. Everyone worked at different companies. I joined the company right out of college. So everybody had a different path. And so don't worry about one path just being that definite way, that you, thing that you have to follow, because everybody, no matter what, will always, uh, most, most of the time, if not always, you know, have a different path of getting to the same place, the same type of role. Um, and then those roles also do change as well. Uh, I've got been able, I'm a program manager, but I've worked on different types of projects, and you can continue to learn from there. So I know we're almost out of time, uh, so I, I can end there. Um, but I definitely encourage you to uh, check out those resources. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. The best and beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt by heart. Thank you. Thank you. Is one such prayer among them? I consider it a great privilege to propose a vote of thanks to all the dignitaries who have witnessed it as a memorable and successful event. Today, my words are not enough to express my gratitude. On behalf of Banaryama Institute of Technology, I would like to thank our chief guest and resource person, Erica Hansen, Google, who graced us with her thought-provoking address and set a perfect platform for our institute students. We are thankful to our management and advisory committee, Dr. K. Kumar, Dean Pedias, and uh, Dr. Jagadishwaran Sir, Professor of Academic, for the perfect logistic support and guidance. I would like to thank our principal for his enthusiastic support to organize this event. A special and heartfelt thanks to our DRC lead, Mr. Ashwin Kumar, and our beloved students for active participation in this event. With this warm words and a kind message, uh, one more request for, from our side. So we have posted feedback link in the chat box. So please uh, kindly put your valuable feedback on the link provider in the chat box. And we move to the end of the today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patience. Listen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words and thank you to all of you and the principal and everybody for, um, for the warm welcome. And thank you so much for inviting me. It was really great to be here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Definitely, we will do our level best to achieve. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, ma'am. I request all the participants to give your valuable feedback. So I have already uh, shared in the chat box.